we got a new weapon to max the beacon of the reed c uh, dia's signature weapon of course we got to start with maxing it again the headbands man i somehow missed that while looking at the mats and these i think oh no this is gonna be a long day <laughs> let's go ahead and get let's get as far as we can i was farming some of the mats yesterday because they were open we're already at oh god i know for sure we can get some out of the shop but not many because these are technically elite enemy drops rare drops yeah i think that's it 12 maybe we can get some greens yeah we can get some greens but 16 it's like nothing dude and then yeah one per two masterless it's such a scam it's such a massive scam these are like the worst mats it could have been honestly these guys are so spread out as well second star level 50 we need some more headbands already and we also need more headbands for dia i'm getting that vibe when like inazuma first came out and everyone needed the samurai drops that's what it feels like. I'm just gonna do the adventure handbook ones, I guess. Here's a nice bundle of five anyway. Individually, they drop so little though, it's crazy. I should honestly just hurry up and do my exploring Sumeru video. I would have plenty of these mats already. Oh no, is that it for the adventure handbook? I really wish they would just like keep showing you them like until there actually weren't any anymore. Yep, that was it. I mean, at least for monster farming, you wouldn't need the interactive map then. Quite sure we are still a ways away. Let's go ahead and check. Third star level 60 now our issue is the consecrated beast shells we will not need any more of the lowest grade of either of mats so let's transform everything sucrose bonus this is like 50 or something i mean 18 two bonus i'll take it thanks <laughs> oh <laughs> we have uh, seven greens well I don't think that's enough for the next level. I don't think we still need green of these anymore. We're gonna go ahead and grab those as well. No bonus, thanks Sayaka. Wow, we still need 10 more blue sturdy shells. That's probably gonna be the bulk. I know we do have some blue headbands, so we, we might be almost okay with Aramites. And as far as I remember, the Adventure Handbook shows like 80% of the Consecrated Beasts, so I'm probably just gonna use that, honestly. There really are not a lot of these dudes in the world. Yes, they do drop a good amount, so that is something at least. I had a really hard time finding this one, I remember. I guess while I'm in the area, I can see if my Poopas have respawned since raising Dia. Looks like they have indeed. May as well pick some up. I was thinking about doing some beeps and, and I wanted to go check. I finally got my first Mega Moglet, but I don't usually do beep compilations for weapon videos, so I'm gonna save that for the God Mode. All right, we've killed like, I think three now. We might have enough. Dude, no way. I don't think I've gotten any purple drops though yet. Give me my first purple drop. Beasts? Oh yeah, this purple one reminds me there's just one randomly chilling out in Inazuma, a single one. <laughs> purple drop. No! Ah, finally we got a purple. Uh, this one, I haven't, I still haven't unlocked this waypoint. It's so far away regardless. Let's go to this one. Gonna sneak up on these Aramites. Still need your headbands. Well, this is underground. I'm kind of wondering if the enemy is also. It seems that it is. Oh my god. Maybe not underground, maybe just down here. Nope, pretty sure it's actually underground. All right, where's an opening? Oh yeah, I remember this dude. I'm gonna see if I can get to that waypoint actually, be a little bit responsible for once. The waypoint is up 30 meters, not too far. Can I have access to it though? Yes, not, not too hard actually. The annoying thing is the consecrated beast is like way up there now. Can we just take these things up to it? It looks like we might be able to actually. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. No purple. I think we've gotten only one raw purple so far. It's crazy, man. Was that it for the adventure handbook? Okay, that was maybe like half of them. Yeah, there's one here as well. It's super annoying to get to. Do we have enough for the next star now? Just barely, dude. What? Almost enough purples, I guess, because we got those eight from the star shop, whatever. Such a huge scam. Wow. But at the same time, there's like 10 consecrated beasts <laughs> in the whole world. And they're not the most pleasant to farm because they're just scattered in this weird underground, above ground area. But yeah, we only need the highest grade mats now. So let's just start with getting everything to max rarity. We did get 40 greens, so I guess that's something. Come on, bonus sucrose. No, not even one. Okay, you gotta make up for it and give me a bonus on these purples. 40% chance you can do it. Okay, thank you very much. So we could get it to the fifth star, but of course the last one is by far the hardest. We need 24 perp, 27 purples. God, we don't even have enough blue uh, brocods, whatever the hell that word is. We might get these other two blues just from running around, but I have no idea how I'm going to get all of those. Hi Bones, long time no see. The question is, do you have any teleporters over here unlocked? Um, yeah, actually. 
like pretty much the same ones I do. Well, I just unlocked this one, so I win. Where is you, Bones? Ah, there you are. She's taking her uh, awesome wanderer. I'm just kind of playing aggro with Yolan and Zhongli here. That worked out really well. Oh, only one blue? That would be just one purple then after everything is transformed. Purple? Yes, we got a purple finally. And seven greens, so that was 2.1. Purple, let's go. Another purple. This is, I'm starting to get some hope back. Come on, keep the train roll. Nah. Oh no, she doesn't even have this one. Uh, Let's try this one, I guess. Aw, <laughs> oh, I thought that was a purple, but it's just a stupid exiles goblet. So as all of the adventure handbook again in Bones World, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go for these other ones that I know are around here. <laughs> uh, Bones Wonder is kind of insane. Another purple. Let's see how far we off. We need to get 52 greens. Sucrose, 85 bonus? Two bonus, okay. That's good too. 11, yikes. That was like not even half of what we need. And no bonus, ouch. How many more do we actually need? Seven, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, so there actually was one here, but it's underground and I have no idea how to get to it. I don't think I ever found this one. Well, here is an underground something, I guess. I think I'm in the wrong place, probably. Let's try this waypoint. Please don't tell me that that, that door is just locked. It would probably be like right beyond this door. Come on, man. I already spent like 15 minutes trying to even get close to it. Now there's a door in our way. <sighs> oh, well, I guess we got to give up on this one. All that work and not even a purple. Still no purples. Yeah, the consecrated beasts are like one, one per 20 minutes now because half of the ones I just can't find or maybe some quest still still locks them behind something. I don't know. This one actually has been removed since from the interactive map, so I guess that one never existed. This one also, it seems. And yeah, that was probably it. I don't think we're much closer, even though I've been farming forever. Dude, four, two, we got two. Literally like half an hour to get two purples. That's, that's messed up. Starting to feel like those eight purples we got for the 16 star glitter isn't so much of a scam. Purple, please. Yes, we did get one. Four more, if my math is correct. I don't know if I even have four more consecrated beasts in my world. There's this really annoying one to get to. Another purple. I think we might be able to do it. Use the wonder boost bones. Yeah, there we go. Zoom. No purple on this one, I think. And I forgot already which ones I have or haven't farmed. Maybe we get super lucky at the crafting station. <laughs> Seven blues. Come on, Sucrose bonus, please. I believe in you. Yes. I said we needed five, but that was after. Oh wait, no, I crafted those two. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let me check real quick. Yes, we're done with consecrated beasts. Wait, we need one, one, one more of those. We did run across a few, so I think we should be good with that. Yeah, okay, good enough. Let's just craft that one we need. <laughs> nice. So yeah, we have uh, 22 blues. I mean, that's not enough for six golds, but why do we Why do we have so, so much of this stuff? Domain runs are like luxury farming compared to those stupid beasts though, so I'll take that every day. Got a purple and six blues. Oh, it's fast. 26, let's go. Another purple. I'm just gonna use these last two condensed and then we'll see where we're at. <laughs> that was also really fast. 24. No purples that time. We already have 39 blues. Maybe we do have enough already. Let's just do this last run anyway. Ugh, that was a slow poopy 27 second run. Basically dying of old age over here. Maybe with some well-timed bonuses. Ayaka, I'm giving you another chance. Zero bonus on purples. Zero bonus on 16. Well, we don't need your stinking bonuses anyway. Six golds and not even a bonus there. Like, come on, Ayaka. All right, so now it is time to finish the weapon. Ascend. Yeah, that was probably one of the hardest ones. Honestly, I gotta say, once you have them all down to memory, I guess it's fine. Like, there's only 14. 
or 12 if you haven't done the quests or whatever. But like they're so individually annoying to get to if you don't know exactly where to go. So we got 33.1 crit rate, 608 base attack. Ratio wise, that's very average. Um, I would have honestly liked to see more crit rate and less base attack. I think that could make it a lot more versatile, but it is already on the lower end of base attack. So I think it's good. The passive is quite simple. 20% attack for hitting an opponent with your elemental skill and 20% attack for taking damage. They can be triggered while you're off the field, but you obviously don't need to be off the field. So nearly every character can have this 40% attack relatively easily. Max HP will also be increased by 32% when you're not protected by a shield. A lot of Claymore users do have resistance to interruption buffs like Ito. Eula, I believe also has some. I'm not super familiar with her though. So again, overall sounds really good. What I usually like to do now after it's been raised is take a quick look at all the Claymore users we have and see who could best take advantage of it. Dia, obviously, as it is her signature weapon. Honestly, I've forgotten most of what Dory does, but I'm pretty sure her healing on burst does scale with HP, so would be something. Other than that though, I don't think she's much of a DPS, so the weapon would probably be wasted on her. I think Ito would be a solid contender. Uh, obviously, if you don't have Red Horn, that's just that just absolutely demolishes it, but the mid-level base attack and the attack bonuses won't be totally useless for Ito because he does still use attack. It's just better to build him with a bunch of death because of this massive attack bonus he gives himself based on his death. But it's just to say attack isn't useless. It's just not as preferable as death. Even so, if you don't have Red Horn and you happen to get this one, it would definitely be a perfectly suitable weapon for him. And while Ito doesn't really need HP, most of the time I'm not taking Zhongli with Ito because he has that resistance interruption. He has a bunch of death. He he survives really well on his own really, so he would get that 35% extra HP just to survive better. Sayu's healing does scale with attack, so pretty much any great sword in that case would be on the same level really. Again, Sayu is not much of a DPS, so the crit rate and everything would be kind of wasted on her. Eula, I think, is a very interesting contender, honestly. Uh, I mean, Gravestone has been like her weapon for a while now, but I feel like this one is a pretty good middle ground, and I think Gravestone might still be slightly better because of the fact Eula has such massive base attack already, and so Gravestone just bumps that up a lot more than this mid-level attack one would be with its up to 40% attack boost, but it does have crit rate. So if you're like taking Binny in your Eula comp, obviously before he is C6 and you get enough attack from him that way, there could be an argument there that you'll trade some attack for some extra crit rate so you can focus more on crit damage subs and uh, circle it. I also think it'd be okay for Shinyan. She scales more with death and attack rather than HP and attack. So it's obviously not perfect really for anyone besides Dia, but I think it's one of those weapons that you can put on anyone and it would be good, just probably not better than everything else. Even ignoring the 32% HP when you don't have a shield, it's still just like a really solid claymore 33 crit rate 40 percent attack that is relatively easy to get i don't think it would be bad on any claymore damage dealer you know the weapon of course isn't that compatible with any team that has zhongli because first of all you're not going to be taking damage unless it's self-inflicted and secondly you're not going to get that 32 percent hp which you know a lot of people might not care about but it is something i usually do at least play with the weapon a little bit so that's what we're gonna do i'm not expecting it to come anywhere close to red horn stone thresher for ito but i do honestly kind of want to start with ito and just and just comparing and seeing how much worse it is than Redhorn. This is almost my typical Geo team, although I don't usually use Yunjin for whatever reason. I mean, most of Ito's damage is from charge attacks, but you do need to get some normal swings in there from time to time as well to recharge the charge attacks. There is, of course, the fact Redhorn gives 88 crit damage versus this that gives zero crit damage. So obviously we'll need to switch some things around if possible. The sword gives us pretty much exactly the same amount of crit rate we are you know, taking off. So it would allow us to go a crit damage circlet. It's actually pretty close, honestly, like the reverse of it. Why does he have such a horrible circlet? My poor Ito. There's no way though. Redhorn is just insane. 40% dev, 60% normal charge attack damage. Everyone has their burst now. So let's go ahead and uh, start this up here. Let's see what his bull does. Uh, nothing because he blocked and he's going to be blocking forever. Okay, there was a 50, 54. Yeah we're, yeah, we're getting like 54k charge attacks. Um, now that buffs are gone, it's like 48k normal attacks. I'm surprised these normal attacks are doing so much. I guess Yunjin is helping with that. All right, everyone has their burst again. Let's go ahead and uh, do this up. I love four star teams because like all the, all the bursts are so fast. Yeah, 54k charge attacks. I mean, that's the important stuff. There's a 92k there at the end. So what we're going to do now is just swap over. Boom. We will have like a few more percent of crit rate and a few percent less crit damage, but it's going to be like decently close, as close as I can reasonably get it, honestly. And we're just going to steal this crit damage from 
why ever the hell Yinfei has it. If you are swapping off of Redhorn, you're just straight up losing crit damage, so, and death, and normal and charge attack damage, but <laughs> let's see how it goes <laughs> anyway. We also need to make sure he he do, he doesn't block the cow strike. Okay, he didn't. What are we getting now? Wait a, wait a second, what? We didn't go into burst mode. I'm so stupid. I'm like, why is he doing fire attacks? That's weird. That's never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I farmed so much my brain fell out. All right, here we go. 105 with the bull. Uh, 41k charged. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. But it's actually, it's not as less as I thought considering like how many big boosts his uh, Redhorn Stone Thresher gives. 41 versus like 55. It is a big difference, honestly. But I mean, 41k charge attacks are still pretty good. Forgot that our uh, uh, Stone Thresher is R3. That's not a super fair comparison anyway. <laughs> it probably would be closer to like 10k damage if it was R1. That's definitely something to keep in mind. But if you really like using Ito and Eula and are perhaps planning on like, you know, ra raising Dia and using her as well, this suits them all fine. I haven't played with Diluc in a while, so let's go ahead and give it to him, both with Gravestone and with this new weapon. Though again, Gravestone is R4, so it's not really fair, but just for fun, I guess. Let's start with the beacon though, and a quick look at his stats. He's at 2000 attack, 159 EM, 81 crit, 172 crit damage. I think it's a decent ratio. 61 pyro, we're going with uh, four piece crimson here. And we are gonna be trying to vaporize, though it's been so long I played with Diluc, I kind of, forgot how he works at all. The one thing I do remember about him is that you're supposed to basic attack in between each of his elemental skills. That was his normal attacks are like, wow, there was a 39K in there. That's kind of, kind of surprising actually. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do some basic attacks. Those are just easier to see overall really. With C6 Binny, they will be pyro anyway. All right, here we go. Let's just do basics just for science. 20K, uh, 41? So yeah, just, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so like the uh, nearly 40k basics are when it's actually correctly vaporized. It's actually pretty impressive. I kind of want to try Stone Thresher on him as well. Yeah, this ratio kind of sucks, so we're basically just going to swap out his crit damage circlet for a crit rate. Okay, that's, I mean, pretty good. We, we still have quite a bit more crit damage than, than we did. Also, I've not been paying attention to if we're getting hit and getting that 20% attack. Although to be fair, that's not something I'm gonna ever pay attention to, like if I would use this weapon on someone. So so honestly, I don't really wanna get hit on purpose to demonstrate its max capabilities because I wouldn't be doing that in a real normal game either, you know? All right, let's go ahead and try this again, I guess. What does Stone Thresher give us? 44? It's not too different, honestly. Maybe a little more than the other weapon, but not a ton. If it wasn't R3 though, it would be pretty close. And I am just doing normal attacks, which this does boost. Whereas, you know, the other weapon boosts everything with its just flat attack boosts. So let's go ahead and try Wolf's Gravestone, R4, even more unfair, blah, blah. I'm gonna still just try and get a good ratio. This is a little low on crit damage. So I'm gonna see what I can do there. I only have one crit damage circlet, so we gotta kind of go with that. And I'm already using the highest crit rate, like substats I have. So probably switch to that, get some more crit rate there. I'm just looking for a decent ratio, which I think this is now 61 to 147. We now have closer to 3000 attack rather than 2000. So I think overall, like that's about the stats I would expect having gravestone and not a crit uh, weapon. We did get the gravestone proc, which is kind of unfairish. Yeah, we're, it's kind of hard to get any criticals. There was a 53 vaporize, but yeah, we had gravestone proc. That was a vaporize. That was the biggest number I've seen so far. But yeah, versus a boss, you're only going to have that w gravestone boost for, I guess, maybe 30% of it if you can kill him in the next 12 seconds. So yeah, what did we learn from our little testings? Not, not much, honestly. Like I've already said a couple of times, I think it's just a really nice general overall claymore for any DPS. It's hard to say without breaking out the calculator and a bunch of formulas if it is actually best in slot for anyone since, you know, we're comparing against R3 and R4 here, which is just not really fair. And then there's the HP increase when you don't have a shield, which some people might value and some people might not value. But getting it up to just R2, you know, in increases the total attack boost from 40 to 50% and the HP from 32 to 40 40. So at R4 like Gravestone, I imagine this would be 35 each or 70% attack total. And so I'm glad to see it's not a super, super niche weapon that only Dia can use. Like a lot of the other weapons we've gotten. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below though. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well.
Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.